everybody. My name is Megan Vicio and welcome to my art class. Today we're going to be learning about botanical plaster casting. And just to break that down a little bit, botanical means just dealing with plants and plaster is a art material we're going to use today. And casting is when you use a mold with the plaster to make a copy of something. And you'll understand all that once we get going. So what is plaster? Plaster is actually also known as gypsum and it's a mineral that comes from the earth called calcium sulfate hemihydrate. And it's taken from the earth and using a process dehydrated to form plaster. And if you've ever had a broken bone, you might've gotten a plaster cast, or if you have an old house, maybe your walls are made of lath and plaster, that's the same material. It's also sometimes called plaster of Paris, and that's just because there's a lot of gypsum found around Paris that was mined. And now another way plaster can be used is as a surface to paint on. So when an artist paints on wet plaster, that's called a fresco. If you want to try saying it with me at home, fresco. And a true fresco, also known as a bon fresco, is when a layers of plaster are applied to a wall, and then the last layer, while it's still wet, the artist actually paints on it. They take their pigments, which are usually in powder form, mix them with water, and paint on the wet plaster. Because the pigments were applied to wet plaster, those pigments actually became part of the wall. And it was a very durable way of painting on a wall. So very old frescoes are actually still intact and you can still see them. The only downfall was that plaster cures very quickly. So an artist would just have to work a very small section at a time. Now, two of the most famous uh, frescoes that you may have heard about, um, you may have seen them, are in Italy and they are Michelangelo's in the Sistine Chapel. Now if you look at these, there's paintings all over that room, even on the ceiling. So there was a lot of scaffolding that had to be set up. And there's also Raphael's Stanza murals in the Vatican, another example of a very famous um, fresco in Italy. Now those are just two really popular ones, but there's many others all around that you can see. Um, or learn about. So working with plaster and plaster casting actually happens to be one of my favorite art forms. You don't really know what you're going to get until you finally pull off that mold and see what you have. So it's a lot of um, hoping that you did it all right, a lot of measurements. It's a little bit scientific, a little bit magical, a little bit mysterious, which is why I really like it. So I'm really happy to share this with you today. So let's begin. All right, let's take a look at the supplies that I put together for you that you picked up at the library. You each got a paper cup with a line drawn on it, a small scrap of sandpaper, a wooden stir stick that's also going to be used as a scoop, the paper bag your items came in. You can cut this down the side and cut off the bottom if you want to lay it flat and use it as a work surface. You got a hunk of earth clay and it's wrapped in saran wrap. Just leave it in that saran wrap until we're ready to use it because it dries out very quickly and we're gonna want this nice and soft uh, for when we use it. And you can actually find earth clay locally. If you, on riverbeds, sometimes there's like just these masses of earth clay, you can dig it up and there's ways of cleaning it to use. You also got a bag of plaster. We're gonna go over a little bit more, a little art history lesson about plaster in just a few moments. But just a fair warning, plaster cannot go down the drain at all. When plasters mix with water, it turns rock solid and it'll clog your pipes. And you also got this um, plastic mold form. And just to save on waste, I try to you know reduce my plastic use. I, re I use these um, reusable forms in your kits. I've used these before for this class when I've taught it. Um, and I just put it in your kit. If When we're done and you say, oh, I want to make more of those. If you'd like to keep this so you can make more, that's fine. You may keep it. Um, if you'd like to return it, there'll be a Dropbox at the library at the same spot that you picked up your kit. You can just return it there and I'll reuse it for future classes. So either is fine with me. Here are some of the things that you'll need from home. You'll need your paper cup filled with cold tap water right up to that line that I drew. Um, you're going to need your work surface. This is that bag that your supplies came in and I just cut it open. If you can do this project outside since the weather's getting nicer, that's the best place to do it. Um, plaster and clay tend to get a little bit messy, so 
If you're outside with your table covered with an old piece of cardboard or the bag, that will work best. This is optional, but it would be helpful to have a little container full of just water. This is for uh, rinsing our tools or washing our finished piece. Remember, none of that plaster can go down the drain. So this really helps when we wanna clean what we're using. And then something to roll with. I have a rolling pin that I use for arts and crafts, um, but if you don't have this at home, you can also use an empty um, bottle or a, like a spray paint can. It's just to give our clay a little bit of a roll to make it smooth before we start using it. And then the last supply you'll need from home is just some plants that we're gonna use. I just wanted to show you some examples of plants that are good to use um, and some things that aren't. Uh, when I'm taping this video, the dandelions haven't popped out yet. So hopefully for you, by the time you're doing this project, and for my honeybees, the um, dandelions will be out, maybe some daffodils. Those would both work great in this project. Um, since I didn't have flowers outside, I just picked an orchid from a plant inside my house, and I didn't mind taking one of the flowers. You want to choose plants that are flat but still have a lot of texture. So if you'll see these evergreens, it's from Cedar Tree. They've got a lot of texture, but they lay really flat. That's gonna work for our project. This is a magnolia. Um, oh, that's another flower that might be out and that works really good. I've done the magnolia for this project, but right now I just have buds. So I snipped off a little branch. They've got those cool fuzzy buds up there. This is an oak leaf from last year. It was just kind of hanging around. And this is garlic grass. It comes out really early in the spring. Something that wouldn't work, these little milkweed pods. They're very cool, but they just, they're just they too thick for our project. See how thick that is? So something like that wouldn't work. Just make sure before you cut anything that it's okay with your parents and that you only take what you need. Okay, my art students, it's time to cast our plaster. But first we need to make our mold. And I've got all the supplies I'll need. They're all laid out in front of me. I've got something to protect my table. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about plaster before we begin. If you've never worked with it, it can seem a little daunting. There's going to be a lot of steps here. So just watch it through. And if you want to play the video again while you're working and just pause it as needed, you can do that too. Just work carefully, work slowly, work thoughtfully. If something, you know, really bad happens and it just doesn't turn out, that's okay. You can always email me and I'll just get you more supplies. But if you follow, you know, the directions here, I think you should be just fine. Using plaster is a little bit more like uh, baking. There's, you know, certain measurements and times that you have to wait. I have full confidence that you can do it. Okay, so I'm going to first get my plants out. And for your piece, I'd suggest using two to three objects, two to three plants. If you have too many, it's going to be too crowded and you're not going to see each individual plant. Um, Two to three, you can even do one if you want it to be really simple. I'm going to use three today, and they're all kind of varying texture. This grass is, you know, kind of long and smooth. The um, stick has just a neat shape to it. That's going to give a really good impression in our plaster, in our mold, because it's got, you know, some height to it. And then this really delicate flower. Okay, as I'm looking at this bag, I see that crease right there. That will show up in my mold. So I'm going to move over to this spot of the bag that has no creases in it and I'm going to just set up my plants. You wanna put textured side up, okay? So I'm gonna put the flower there. Sometimes with flowers, they might be sticking up a little bit. Just break it. You can break it with your fingers so it lays flat. And I have my garlic grass that I found in my backyard. It's got some cool curlies. And then I am going to put my branch right across there, okay? It's not too cluttered, it's not too layered. Okay, so I've composed it. You wanna give yourself a little space. Do not try to fit your image into this box, okay? Work a little bigger. See how I'm working a little bigger? We will compose and crop our piece in just a moment. After I'm happy with that, I'm gonna take my slab of earth clay and I'm just going to carefully unwrap it. Yours was wrapped up in cardboard just to keep it nice and steady so that it didn't bend in your bag. So I've unwrapped it, and there's two sides to your clay. See this side? It's kind of bumpy on mine. This side is a lot smoother. If yours has dings and fingerprints in it, you might just want to take this moment to get your rolling pin and just very gently roll back and forth. You don't want to thin out your clay too much, okay? Just give a nice roll back and forth. If yours is smooth, if there's no fingerprints in there, if there's no dense, then you are ready to go. So I chose this side as the, the smoother side. So that means this nice smooth side is going to touch my flowers. So with two hands, however it works, you're going to very carefully 
flip over your slab of clay right onto your flowers. With my fingers now, I'm going to gently press without moving that clay. Once it's down, it, you can't peel it back up and do it again because you'll have a just kind of a blurry mishmash of your plants. So pat it down and then use your fingertips to firmly go over the entire surface of the clay. If you are digging down and making deep holes in your clay, that might be too hard. Once it's fully pressed and you know you've got every spot, you're gonna carefully take that clay up and flip it over. And then you're just going to remove the plants from your clay. You'll notice some will come out easier than others. Sometimes a pair of tweezers helps just to grab them. You wanna make sure that you're being very careful with your, your mold now. If you put fingerprints in here, they're gonna show up in your final piece. So if you're using tweezers to get something out, just very carefully. Okay, I have removed as much as I could of all the plant bits that are in there as best as I could. Now we're going to take our plastic square and there's a line that says fill in there. Just make sure you can read that the correct way. Now what we're gonna do is hold the corner. That'll just help you find the square better. I like to hold it with my two fingers like that. And what we're gonna do is compose by hovering above our square right here to find the best looking spot. Composing just means using your artistic eye to choose what you're gonna see at the end, okay? When you compose, before you push this down into the clay, you wanna make sure you have about a finger's width of clay on all sides. If you're over too much and you push down, there's gonna be a big hole there. So I look, I'm, I haven't pushed in yet, I'm hovering, I'm composing, and I think I'm gonna choose right there, still holding the corner, and just firmly press that plastic wall down into your clay. And then you're going to go around your mold, and with your fingers, this is gonna help with leaks, just press up the clay on all four sides. I like to hold down the plastic wall as I push up the sides. Once your sides are all pressed up, just take a little pinch of clay and we wanna seal up this crack right here. You can just from the outside, just press a little clay onto it. You've made a mold and now we're ready to mix our plaster. Okay, so working in an, another area, you don't really wanna move your mold too much. Your clay is a little bit softer than mine, so it's not gonna move as easily. So just find another spot to work. You're gonna fill your cup up to that line with cold water. And we use cold water with plaster because it sets up slower and it's gonna give you a little bit more working time. I've got my scooping stick, my stirring stick, and I've got my plaster. So I'm gonna teach you the way that I learned in college how to mix plaster. Sometimes you'll see a recipe for proportions, but this is the way I learned and it's the way I've always used it and it's never failed me. You're gonna take scoops of the plaster using your spoon and you want to evenly distribute the plaster, sprinkling it in over the entire surface of the water, okay? So it means you don't wanna just dump in the middle. Try to get it on the sides. I am not going to stir this and I'm not gonna put my stick into that water until we're all done. So I'm just gonna keep on scooping until the plaster is going to start rising up to the surface of the water and we're gonna see islands on the top of our, the surface of our water and I'll show you that in just a minute. So I kept on scooping and if you see what I mean, that's what I mean, a little island. I can see the plaster is all up to the surface of the water and there's just a little bit of an island right there. That is good. Now we know we have enough plaster in here. You might have a little bit of extra plaster in your bag. That's okay, you can just put that aside. So taking your stir stick, you are going to go ahead and stir your plaster nice and gently so we don't add too many air bubbles. Scrape the sides and scrape the bottom. Okay, my plaster is all mixed. There's no more lumps. I'm just gonna wipe off the excess, put that stick aside. And now it's time to pour our plaster into our mold. Okay, I've got my mold and there's my fill line. I'm just gonna take my plaster and gently pour it right into my mold up to the fill line. You may have a little bit of extra plaster in your cup and that's okay. If you don't fully reach the fill line, that's okay too, as long as you're close. 
okay, I just poured my plaster in and the first thing I wanna do is check for leaks and I don't see any around. That means I did a good job sealing up my mold. If you have plaster that's starting to leak out, you need to use some of your clay to patch that. I don't have any leaks and I'm good. So now what I'm gonna do for about 30 seconds is just pound the table. And what that's gonna do is release the air bubbles that are stuck under there. Just bang the table like that. Okay, the bubbles are all released. They all move to the top. I'm gonna let this sit for now three to four hours. Just leave it right alone. You don't have to move it. Um, it's gonna do its thing. There's gonna be a chemical reaction. It's gonna get hot and then it's gonna cool down. With your stir stick, that can just either go in your compost or it can go in the garbage with the plaster on. Remember, we don't put plaster down the drain. If you had any le leftover plaster in your cup, just leave it and we'll let that dry and I'll show you what you can do with that. If you have plaster on your hands, just take that little bin you are using as a wash bin and wash your hands. Um, and we'll just let that sit and we'll come back in about three to four hours. Okay, so it's been about three hours. My plaster is cool to the touch and I know it's ready to demold. So what we're gonna do very carefully, our plaster at this point is very green still. So we have to care, carefully mold with it. You're just gonna pull off your clay mold. This is so exciting. You guys ready for this? What's it gonna look like? There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Here's my clay. If I flip it over, wow, it's so cool. And then very gently, I can take my plastic wall and open it up a little bit and the plaster should fall right out. And there we go. See all the detail? You can even see the petals of the orchid. So the next step, we're gonna take that little bin of water. I like to take my finger and run it around the outside edge. It's a little sharp and that should kind of flick right off. If you have any kind of paintbrush, a very gentle paintbrush, you don't wanna go in with anything too harsh right now. Your plaster is still very soft. So I just have this really soft paintbrush. I'm just gonna go around and kind of get that clay debris off the surface of my plaster. Rinse it, so just finishing up, cleaning the surface. Once I'm happy with that, I can take my sandpaper in the water and just go around the corner if you'd like and soften that edge. If you have the sandpaper and your piece wet while you're sanding, that helps it flow smoothly. Then I'll just keep sanding until I'm happy with that edge. So there we go. You can shake off the water, pat it dry if you'd like. There's our finished piece of plaster. So here's one more thing for you. Remember that if you had a little bit of plaster left in your cup? Well, if you just pop that right out, then you've got this cool little disc of plaster. You can go ahead and paint a little picture on there or draw something. And then you've got yourself a cool little tiny canvas to do some more art on. And that's not all. You have your clay. Now mine's really hard because my, my clay was a little harder. Yours is gonna be really soft like this. So now you have a hunk of clay that you can make some things out of. You have a whole new project here. Maybe you'd like to make a pinch pot or what about if you made some beads? You just buy rolling clay into a ball and then you could just take a skewer and poke a hole in it. Then you've got some beads. Maybe you'd like to make some little faces or my daughter Alice made these. She made these little red pandas. She made this little set at Heldeberg Workshop and then she let it dry in the sun for a couple days. And when it was hard, she painted it so you can make some little critters. Okay, artist, it is the end of the video, but before we go, I just wanted to say a couple more things. Make sure you clean up your spot. Any extra plaster can just be scooped up and thrown in the garbage. Your water, bucket that you've been using to wash your hands or your tools in, that can just be dumped outside, um, maybe in the woods or something. It's not going to harm anything. Remember, no plaster down the sink. These are just some examples of different ones I did. This is that sprig of cedar I showed you at the beginning. There's a lot of texture in that. If you would like to add a hole to your piece so that way you could hang it on the wall on a nail or with a string. All I did was I took a drill bit and I by hand I just carefully went through my piece and it's not too hard to cut through. Just make sure you work down from the edge so it doesn't crack. Here's some other pieces that I've made in the past. These were from when my kids were really little. I didn't put their hands in plaster, right? I did the same technique of plaster casting. First I made a mold with play-doh and I pushed their hands into the play-doh 
and then I poured plaster into that mold. And you can see how detailed the plaster really gets. It gets every little wrinkle and fingernail. There's something cool to show you. Those are pretty neat. And just remember, if you'd like to return your plastic wall to the library, there'll be a bin to do that. If you would like to continue on, if you really enjoyed this and you want to keep it, or if you need to try again, just keep it. That's okay. So now it's time for you to try your hand at plaster casting. Just remember, follow the steps and you should be okay. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of appreciation for working with plaster, like the artist Michelangelo and Raphael. And if you'd like to share your creations with me, I would love to see them. I'll leave my email at the end of this video, or you could send them to Mrs. Brown. Okay, I hope you enjoy your vacation, and I hope all goes well with plaster casting. Bye!